Hello Spider Squad. This video is about how I paint and base these little mushrooms. I'm talking to you from the edit now. When I came to editing it, I realised I'd waffled through all of the painting and it's made it almost impossible to edit down into a 10-15 minute video. So, for a change, and because I need the watch hours if I ever want to monetize, this one is going to be a long one. So either use that scrub button to look through it, or watch the whole thing, or just go and watch one of my Pico videos if this isn't for you. All right, enjoy the video. My current obsession that's not electronics, a little mushroom man that I make. So you've seen the other video about this, but I thought I'd go through how I paint and how I base these that you might be interested in. So of course I start off with a molded cast head. So out comes the head. There you go. Now here's a uh, nose holes. Nose hole. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Um, his nose nose holes. Nose hole. I said thank you, Andy. <laughs> his nostrils. Well, they've got a bit bubbled up now in the resin. So I get myself one of these little cutters, and out comes his um, nasal protuberances. This might end up being a her. I did think I might drill these out to give him proper. Those hole. <laughs> but uh, no, not going to bother. So I found also that I can clip off these little over bits, which was where my original mould edging was when I stuck it down to the board. Just nibble those off and um, while I'm there, let's do it with the cap as well. Now some of the caps I haven't filled up enough, so there's a little divot and I've just put cost clay in them. Sorry, not cost clay, super sculpting and uh, rounded them over. But I had enough in the pour to save this one. So this is more about removing material rather than adding new, rather than adding new stuff in. Something else I found really useful is this. It's just a little block of wood um, and I stuck some sandpaper on it very flat block but I stuck it on and then it's quite a nice surface just to smooth the bottom off and I can do the same with this well, there's something about having a hard surface underneath it that makes it work better for me anyway some of the mushrooms I just sand the top off as well so this is less smooth but that'll work. I'm happy with that one. Here's another amazing tip. You get yourself a rubber and your old, old sandpaper. If you do this, it cleans the dirt off the sandpaper. How cool is that? Just one of them rubbers. Okay, so now I've got my surface there. So that's my blank. So now let's put a mouth on him. So here he is. He's uh, set overnight, cooked well, and that's quite firm on there. So that's all I need to do with him to begin with. So you can see the paints here that I'm going to use. I've got two colours of brown, but I don't really use both of those. Uh, this is assuming we're going to give him brown eyes. We've got the bone white, which is what I use to match the colour of the resin. And we've got dead white for his eyes. And then also this is the modern equivalent of what I would call flesh wash, which was my favourite inky wash that Citadel used to do. But now it's called Reckland Flesh Shade. So to begin with, let's paint the bone colour on this just to hide the Sculpey. Not really precision that, is it? So I'll leave that to dry. I cheated and used the hairdryer. So let's just give it another coat. You begin to see the colour coming through. But the next thing I'll do is do his eyes. 
Well, I've got a special brush which I use for the eyes, which is this one, which lets me be a bit more precise. And then I just reach in under the uh, eyelids here. So I'm not overly bothered because of the way this is going to look um, if I catch the eyelids. But what I'll do is go back in afterwards. And I'm sort of going into the like over what I can think of is overbite. These originally were Sculpey balls that I made, the eyes, which I pushed into it and then I built the eyelids over it. So there is a slight gap between the eyelids and the eyes. Normally a couple of coats of paint of this does as well. I'm trying not to be too thick, but it doesn't matter. I'm trying not to be too thick. I'm trying not to paint it too thick. But if I do... That's fine. All right. I'm sorry if I wasn't in the middle of the camera there. So let's uh, let's blow dry those as well. OK. At least the um, paint doesn't dry out when you're using the. Well, your paint on your palette doesn't dry out when you use the hairdryer in between. So I'm just going to go over them again. Second coat. See, I caught the uh, eyelids then again but you can get away with that right so that's probably all i want in a way if there's a little bit of the color bleeding through this it doesn't it doesn't matter because when i finish these it adds to the translucent effect that the eyeballs have which i really i really like the way it comes out on this So that's finished with the white now. I won't use the white again on this unless I make a mistake. So whether we can see this on camera or not. See, as I've gone into the, the eyeballs are the deepest thing on this. So as I've gone into the corners of the eyeballs, I've come out onto the eyelids. But that doesn't matter because when I take some of the bone white again, uh, just a teeny bit really now I just try this is a bit where I then have to be much more careful I try and give him eyeliner in a way and I'm not going really deep in because I'm going to use a wash inside that but this just corrects the errors around the and the eyelids a little bit in the corner there I've missed. I think the other one's all right, maybe. Maybe there a little bit. All right. I think I'm happy with that. Hopefully you can see that. Let's blow dry this again. Right. He's looking good. So now, how do I do the eyes? Well, I've got this one of these Pika pens. I, I, I'm not really painting it with this, but I just use this because it gives a really good dot like a Sharpie and my big fat monkey hands don't get in the way. So what I'm actually doing now, I'm actually looking directly in this guy's eyes. So I'm looking down and then I'm looking down this bit and then I decide where I want him to look at me. So you can't see that because I'm not really in the angle. And in fact, let's see if I can do this. Let me stand up. So sorry if the shadows go funny. So I'm looking straight at him. Let's make him so he's looking up slightly. And then I'm going to go in and give him a dot. All right, so that's a bit low down, but he does look as if he's looking at me. And then if I take the pen and put it to where it feels like his other eyeball should be. And that's how I line them up. So they're a bit low down, but now his eyes look right. See, it looks like he's looking at us, if I get it in the right angle. So that's how I get the positions for the eyes. 
Now I'll use one of the browns. I'm probably going to end up just using Beastly Brown all along today because I tend to like this one better. As you can tell by on here. So let's pop a little, only a little dab at the moment of the brown in there. And I'll take a brush that I can put more paint on for this so I can wick more of the paint up just in case. But it also goes to a nice pleasing point. So now what I'm going to start to do, I'll have to look at this myself and not put it in the camera view, but hopefully that's still in focus for you guys. So now I'm going to start building up the brown of his eyes around that. So this is where occasionally I can adjust the centre because the centre doesn't really matter now. But it's giving me the starting point. I can't really draw a circle when it's this small, but I'm sort of expanding the area to show his iris. And sometimes I'm just picking up little dots of paint again. And that's gone a bit wrong because it's gone like a upside down triangle. So hopefully I can bring it out a little bit. And he's got sort of a love heart eyes there, but we can go back in and, and fix that afterwards. I just push it out a little bit. So that's got some vaguely circular eyes and I use the term circular sparingly. And now again, I'm looking him in the eye while I'm doing this. So dude, I'm about to poke you in the eye. So I'm going to give you the dignity of looking at you. Right, so now I've got the two irises almost in the right position. And where I've just gone over the edge again slightly, I'll just go in again with white and just like correction pen it out a little bit to make it a bit more circular. So I've lost the pupil now, but that doesn't matter because it still feels like he's looking at me. And that's what I'm going for. On this from wherever he's sitting there he's either looking to the side or he's definitely looking at something well that seems to get the angles of the eyes right for me so I do it as if he's looking at looking at me then I'll go back in with black I didn't bring the black out I'll go back in with black and I'll just put a teeny dot in the middle for his pupil uh, when this has dried so I'll leave this now and I'll come back to it when it's dried a bit proper and do the next bit Right, that's just rounded them up a little bit. It looks like they're slightly out of alignment now. I oh, know they're all right when I look at them straight on. So now let's just put the pupils back in. I forgot to mention black. I don't like this black. It's more blue. You can actually see the blue coming out of it. Just under this light, it almost acquiesces blue. Let's take this again and literally this time i am trying to get a dot on the end of the brush and just a dot there for the pupil one dot teensy little thing that's the first one let's reload just in case it's quite watery this is i'm trying to get the brush relatively vertical and there we go two little pupils in there now i'm not going to bother putting a highlight on this when i was doing miniatures and i was younger i used to put a highlight dot on the eyes as well with a toothpick can't do that anymore but anyway I'm doing a different thing for highlights on this so let's just let that dry and then we'll carry on okay now don't know whether you can see but there's still whites around the edge of the eyes but now we're going to use this amazing flesh wash I'm going to keep on calling it flesh wash this Raycland flesh shade you don't need a lot but I definitely use my big bristle brush for this a uh, long brush because I want to just dunk it in here and pull as, as much up as I can so it's there I'm almost using it as ink and then what I'll do is just go around the edges of his eyes with it so you see as soon as I've got enough on there I just put it around his eyes and he almost goes in straight away like an eyeshadow you see it brought his eyes alive I'll do it on this side as well if I can 
it stays in focus so around the edge it's almost too much you're putting in but it really lights the eyes up go around the other side and go around the top and that will hide all of the white that you've got into the crevices in the edges it actually gives uh, these guys it gives them almost an egyptian look it looks a bit like the egyptian coal i think so just try and get it into the crevices there and i'm actually loading it up a bit more so it pulls in there but you want to make sure that it doesn't pull so that it when you turn it upright it drips now what i found with another one is if i want to make it more feminine if i go off the edges there in the corners and you can actually as well just with a different brown just put some little eyelashes on and it turns it into a more feminine face and then finally you see it's, it's, it's come alive now look he she come alive suddenly he's looking at you I just take a little bit more of this and I'm going to do the um, Andy Who's hold? <laughs> that's right I'm going to do these just pop some in there and then finally do one sometimes I do the lips pink but on this one I'm going to just catch the inside of the mouth just to give it some shadow in there and that is essentially the face painted apart from finishing the eyes so I'm not going to hair dry this because it will blow it over so I'm just going to leave this to dry naturally this one I haven't taken the the sprue off this one but just while i'm here i want to show you how i do the middle of the mushroom and there's there's nothing to it really i'm just using another brown whichever brown i'm in the mood for and uh just going to go into the mushroom and try and get it into all the crevices not that i really need to show you how to paint the inside of a mushroom do i need to show you how to paint a mushroom maybe you just enjoy listening to me but one thing that i do I'm using a, a thicker brush that I can hold a lot of paint in. But notice I'm just flicking the paint a little bit over the edges. So I'll try and get a, a rim there that's all of a the natural colour of the resin. But just at the edges there, on some of them, I just pull it out a little bit and it makes it look a little bit more organic to me anyway. Just looks like chocolate at the moment on the camera but reminds me of something sort of almost like jumanji or something i don't know just the way it goes over the edges and of course i can flesh wash this afterwards if i want and then that'll get into the deep crevices so i tend to use a darker brown for um, the caps that i'm leaving the natural color because that um i think the natural ones are more chance likely that you can eat than these light like, standard button mushrooms and they always have the dark bits but i heard somewhere that if it's got a lighter bit don't don't test this but if it's got a lighter bit inside these gills or whatever they're called if they're lighter they're more it's more likely to be poisonous but i don't know these are just resin mushrooms which you also should not eat all right so that's the inside of the mushroom now this guy hopefully should be dry now Okay, so that's the eyes done. Really brings them out, this flesh wash. I love it. But there's one bit left to do. So this bit, I'm going to use some UV resin. And I only need a little bit. I normally put it in a little bottle top or something like that. There you go, hardly any. Make sure I put that away. And I've got a special brush which I only use for UV. That's it. Got UV on it. Um, but there's nothing special about it. It's just the brush that I don't mind ruining. But I've used this quite a few times now. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of this and use it like varnish. And just really let it, a bit like the wash, just pull into the eyes. So I'm not. I want it to go down into the edges but not too much because I, I want the the eyes to look glassy I want the eyes to look watery and obviously around the edge of your eyes it looks a bit watery so you see I hardly when I said I needed two drops I hardly need that even 
one drop would have sufficed and just make sure I've got it in both corners and then suddenly you get all the highlights on the eyes you see that the watery in the bottom now I don't flash it straight away I'll leave it for a little bit just to let it let it pull really and let it find its find its level and now I've done that let's get me little little UV torch this is another one that's not my uh, not the one I converted but let's just go up there that way and I'm trying to do it this way so it's almost like a drip goes on the centre of the eye and then it will magnify that a little bit just makes them look a little bit real so that should have gelled it up and then I tend to just leave it for a few minutes like that and come back to it later Oh yeah, to clean the brush, I just get a bit of IPA and spray it into there. That's normally all I need to do to clean the brush. Right, so now he's done. I've got these little laser cut discs. Now, I know not everyone's got a laser cutter, but you can probably buy circles of these. But I'm just using these because it's easy. But it doesn't have to be that. I mean, you could use... A Citadel miniature. This is a Citadel base. What's the date on this? I don't know. I don't think they do slotter bases anymore. I might be wrong. But um, I've used the same technique on these. It doesn't really matter. Or you could maybe get a piece of cork. I will use cork in a bit. But you might get a piece of cork and do that as well. But I'll just show you what I do to prep them to start with. I'm going to keep that. Might be worth a fortune. I'll sell it on eBay. So the first thing I do on any base is get this. What is it? Polyfiller, spackle. I buy this one, ready mixed one, and it lasts forever. And that's why I like it, honestly. And you don't have to mix it. You don't have to mess with it. But I just use this for bases and I've, I've had this tube. I don't know how long. But to put it on the base, all I tend to do is just, I don't need him at the moment. Uh, I'll use... So I use the smaller base. I'll use the bigger base. The bigger bases look nicer. There's a bit more with these mushrooms once you add the hat to it. The hats are quite big um, or the caps are quite big. I've got to clean that bit off. But uh, this is what I do for the bases and for these mushrooms specifically. Uh, this is what I've been doing. So just a blob of polyfiller, spackle, whatever. I've got a little dabber. Let me go and get me a little dabber. All right, this is my little dabber. Now, I used to use these at school. Do you remember them? I don't know whether they still use them. You can still get them. But I just love the effect that these give. Uh, a bit of plastic could do it. But I just spread that on the base like this. Now, if I was doing this with a miniature, once I spread it on the base and I'm not trying to get it flat because this could be mud or or anything but once I've got it flat I would get the miniature well once I've got it to an effect I like like that I'd get the miniature and I would just push the miniature's feet into it and then pull the miniature out so that would leave two little feet holes for the miniature to stand in and I'd glue it back on afterwards another thing you can do yeah you can just pull it up as well uh, that's another effect you can get which gives it a, a different this is supposed to be mud but it just makes it look slightly different so that's my base now as I was saying I discovered that this will actually glue this onto the base so what i've been doing with these is finding where i want to put him put him pretty much dead center and then that's it i will leave him now until this sets i do find it looks nicer if i just rub my finger around and just if there's any that have gone over the edge any that's gone over the edge if you just rub your finger around and take that off it sort of gives a little lip and it's really nice when you paint it. So 
I'll leave him here and I normally leave him overnight. And when I come back to this, we'll find it's completely set up and he's attached to it. So I don't normally use that for sticking, but I've just discovered with this resin, you can do this. And obviously the bottom of these mushrooms have got a bit of a surface area as well. I think I'll push him a little bit further back and to the side a little bit. There you go. So let's leave him to set up. I'll see you tomorrow. OK, that's definitely gone well and truly hard now. I've actually left in several weeks. Normally I just leave it overnight. I would normally now just put flesh wash over it. But before I do that, just while this is untreated, uh, let's just put a little bit of higher level on the base. So I use these, I call them cork rocks. They're just bits of cork that have been ground up. Now, I think I originally bought these from a railway modeler place. I can't remember. It might have been Games Workshop. But you can see, if you get a, a cork out of a bottle of wine, you can just break it up into little pieces. And these look amazing. So all I do is get a bit of tacky glue. You could do this with or PVA, you could do this with um, super glue as well if you wanted, especially for this bit. I would use PVA for all, all the other bits I'm doing afterwards and you'll see why. But uh, for this one, let's just put a couple of little blobs on here where I want the, uh, the rocks to go. I'm going to be quite liberal with my PVA for these because I, I really want the PVA to fill underneath it. Now fat fingers aren't going to be easy for me on this but uh, let's zoom in a bit. Two blobs there, hard to see, white against white and I just find the flattest bit, doesn't really matter um, and just pop them on there and squidge it down. All right now that will give me a couple of rocks and I've actually built these rocks up as well before um, but Let's just have that as it is now before it dries. So the reason I put a lot of it is because I want to add some other detail around it. So while I'm here, I'm going to start now. Again, this probably is better to use PVA other than super glue. And I like the tacky glue because you can apply it quite accurately. I'm just going to find some areas, especially so I've got some detail there that's sort of raised up. But over here, I've not got a lot. It's quite a flat area. So I'm just going to put some more glue, not everywhere, but just on some of the flat areas and never forget the back of it as well. And each time I apply this, I'll look for some other areas to put this glue on. So I'm going to have to wait really for the these to dry, this PVA here to dry. But in the meantime, I can do some more things. So now I've got something else, which again, I think I've, I don't know where I got this from, but this is some quite runny sand, but it's also got some smaller rock type things in them, smaller little pebbles in this. They're, they're really teeny. I don't know if you can. Can you see them? So again, I just keep them in a film canister. Hey, do you remember film? It doesn't work on a digital camera. And let me just get a bit of paper. Hopefully this won't muck the white balance about. But uh, I tend to just get a piece of paper and fold it. This is just my crazy uh, workflow when I'm doing bases. Again, doing several bases at once is fine. I'm just going to do this with it. So just season it up a little bit. And then with a, not really any care I'm taking, this should now attach to the base where I put the glue, just like glitter. And sometimes it picks up the, the bigger pebbles. On this occasion, it didn't. Just depends how I'm doing the base and how I want to do it. Again, this will work straight onto a plastic base as well. If you use them, I'm using wood on this one, as you know. And then because in that crazy way I think about things, I folded that just like glitter on Blue Peter. I can pop that back in the uh, little thing there which is why I use these film canisters as opposed to using um, a bag to keep these in. It just manages it and then I can use that piece of paper for the next bit. So at this point, normally I'd flesh wash it, but because I've got these cork things, I'm going to have to undercoat these as well. I normally just do it with whatever black I can find to, to just go over these. But you see, as when I touched it there by accident, it moved it a little bit. So I want to make sure these are set up first and then I'll come back to it. 
normally if I'm doing a batch of these I'll do this bit and then go and have dinner or something like that and when I come back it's all set up and it means when I paint it just paint these rocks here they're not going to move they're going to stay set so see you in a couple of seconds all right that's gone off now so the next thing to do is give the bits of cork a little bit of coating in black Right, so I'll have to dry brush those with a lighter colour and then they'll be sorted. And now the flesh wash the rest of the base. I'll try and avoid where I've painted the rocks at the moment. You see straight away you get a really interesting texture around there. And I love the effect that this wash has on the sand. It sort of sucks out into the sand. Look at that. Um, always fascinated by that effect so I'm trying to hide all of the white polyfiller spackle and it doesn't really matter I've picked up a little bit of black off the rocks there but what you see what the, the sand and the over PVA and glue in it has meant that the sand is stuck to that and makes it look like the rocks are stuck in there in the landscape a bit more so I'm just gonna add a bit more wash to that too much wash really and uh, I will continue that when that has dried as well see you in a cut frame so just a lighter grey now which I'm going to use to dry brush the rocks and an old brush that's way past its prime don't use a new brush for dry brushing unless you want a sacrificial brush for it. Take some of the grey off it and then just try and pick up some of the texture of the cork. It's not just it's not I'm not really dry brushing, but it's that sort of technique. I'm just trying to run it over the raised surfaces and that's all you need to do for a rock see they've, they've definitely a rocky look now and that's it for painting i'll leave that now when the rest is just building up these materials on the base see some of the wash has pulled up which looks a bit like muddy water depends what effect you're going for on this one i'm going to cover up most of the spackle now polyfiller but again not doing it on all of the places but some of the places but in the end I will end up having PVA on most of the surfaces in here use something to push them into the crevices in there doesn't even matter if things get on the rock and I'll show you that later this is definitely going to be more of a muddy muddy landscape than a grassy landscape So next I'm going to use, I've got these two chippings, I've got green chippings uh, and I've got brown chippings. There they are. They're both similar, I think they're wood chippings they're made from, but that's a darker muddy look. So let's, again I'm doing the same thing you see, I'm not being in any way careful, just like, just like glitter. Apart from this is a bit more sustainable. And what I like now is once I've got to this stage, I don't really have to wait till anything dries. So let's put this back. Now let's go in again with the green. And I'm just mostly now just trying to fill the rest of it up. The other bits with green there. Especially around going to build up things around the base of the rocks as well and maybe a little bit around the edge so same thing with the green chippings now and as soon as you add the green so normally I quite often add a bit more green so we've got the sandy we've got the sandy we've got a muddy look now you see that green bit not going over the top with the green I think there's a little bit in there I don't know whether I can get in there 
done the rocks a little bit too close. Maybe I can get some uh, a little bit down there as well. Doesn't really matter if I don't. You can't see that side of it too much. Put a bit more on there. I haven't used it in this one, but another thing I use is scale ballast, which is uh, a railway thing. Yeah, I don't know whether it's to scale, but it is. But that's a different texture that sometimes I put on before I put the sand and boulders ones on. So now this is virtually done. But the last bit I do is put static grass on it. Now you can get a static grass applicator, which doesn't work for me where I want to just put little spots of grass on so you see at the front there I've just left a, a teeny little bit without any glue on so I'm just going to put a spot so I don't spread the glue out for static grass for this I'll just put spots here and there so it needs a spot there there maybe one at the edge there where I've missed it so I'm just trying to fill in the remaining bits but I do like doing quite a bit around the base of the boulders and a little bit more at the front now when i used to do this i put the static grass in one of these so this is full of static grass and what i used to do is is open that and squeeze it and blow it on like that so you probably can't see this on the camera but as i'm blowing bits of grass are going on but if you use a little spot of PVA what happens is if you just dump the grass onto it as the PVA dries the grass stands up itself but that doesn't work if you put too much PVA on it but for a miniature bases for me this always works well so I literally just dump it on there um, I think maybe a bit at the edge there all right but then what I do is I absolutely don't touch it. Once I've done this bit, I then leave it again, just so that the PVA goes clear, so you can't see it, and then it will stand up some of the uh, bits of grass and make it look really realistic. You see that I did a similar thing on this miniature. So look at the base there, there's only a teeny little bit of static grass on it, but where it is, it's standing up on its own without having to use the complicated applicator for it. So that's just another way you can do it. And I use this so it's just in little bits and it makes it subtle. And I think it looks really good. I don't know whether you like this base or not, but I think it looks great. Oh yeah, you can get these as well. They're actually live lichen, although it's probably dead. It was live at one point. You get a little bit of that, that and you just glue it at the bottom of a rock or something like that and you get a brown version as well. It looks like it's a little bush or something. That's something else you can use but I'm not going to use it on this one. Sometimes they even paint around the edge of the base in brown and then put a high gloss varnish on that so it looks like it's wood. I know this one is wood but if you're doing the Citadel dark bases and then that looks good on those as well. So that's this mushroom almost finished. All I need to do now is glue this on. I'll super glue that on and we're done. So I'll leave you with the beauty shots. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe and thanks for watching. I know it's been a long one. I appreciate if you've stayed to the end. Okay, bye. Those hold. <laughs> Are you going to spend around for something good?